So for the past few weeks, I've been debating on whether or not I should do a follow-up video on this case because so little information is being released and a lot of the information is one-sided that it's like almost impossible and unfair to really give my perspective on the case. But something that really is important to me is that I feel like we have a responsibility to give a voice to the voiceless, considering that Kenny is gone, he is deceased, he's been laid to rest. I think it's important that a lot of his friends and family come forward and speak up on his behalf. Now, I know it's kind of difficult for them because they're in Anguilla and this has hit mainstream media all the way to the U.S. This has become an international story. And because Anguilla is so small, it's almost hard for them to share their voice, share their thoughts, share their opinions to people in the States. And you could kind of understand it. People usually side with who they're more familiar with, who they closely relate to. Hapgood is American. I think a lot of Americans, especially white Americans, are siding with him. But Getting into some of the things that I find very alarming about this case, let's talk about it. So one of the first things that I find very interesting about this whole story is I'm wondering, is there a son in the picture? Because I've been following this story in its early stages and I never heard anything about a son going online. And, you know, this is just all speculation. This is people sharing comments. But these are also witnesses who were at the hotel the day the crime occurred and they brought up a son. But when you read um, a lot of the statements, when you read the PR statement that was released... They're always bringing up the two girls that, you know, he was protecting his two daughters. But no one's talking about the son. I think it's really interesting that the son is being excluded from a lot of the discussions. And it seems like everything is centered around the two girls. And I'm just wondering why that is. And like I said in the beginning, I think it's our duty to give a voice to the voiceless. And dead men can't speak. So we're only getting Hapgood's side of the story. And as we all know, there's three sides to the story. There's Hapgood's side this Kenny side and then there's a the truth and unfortunately Kenny cannot defend himself against Hapgood's claims and the one opportunity Kenny had to share his side of the story he was silenced a witness said that Kenny asked can he talk and Hapgood said you don't have a effing thing to say as he allegedly tightened his hold until Kenny expired so what does Hapgood not want us to know so the third thing I want to talk about is Hapgood's online supporters, some claiming to be his friends and family, are racist and xenophobic. You can go to the comment section in my last video on this subject and see some of the racist comments that were made. One man on Facebook even referred to Anguilla as a whole SHIT whole country. And that's echoing the sentiments of Donald Trump when Trump expressed frustration with immigrants coming to the U.S. from Haiti and Africa. Many of Habgood's online supporters are discouraging people from visiting Anguilla, saying that it's dangerous and locals hate white Americans, even though a white American man has been charged with manslaughter for the killing of a local. I'm reading stories online of people saying, white people, saying how much they love Anguilla. One woman went through a traumatic experience in Texas that caused her to go to Anguilla to seek refuge. And she was speaking on how happy she was. She found peace and comfort. And then after this case arose, child, she flipped the script. She was talking about how unsafe she felt being in Anguilla. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, so you're just going to turn your back on the people and the country that welcomed you when you were going through a traumatic experience? Like, is this for real? And what I'm reading is real. It just really shows the character of Hapgood's online supporters. And another thing I want to add, if Anguilla was a SHIT whole country, like that one guy on Facebook said, I doubt they would open up luxury resorts, five-star resorts that charge $600, $700 a night, $1,000 a night for people to stay. You don't find places like that in those type of countries, personally, because I don't think people will be traveling to places that they don't feel safe and paying that much money. Like, it just doesn't make sense. The fourth thing I want to talk about is the Anguilla government. 
encouraging their citizens to be silent. Like, what are of the authorities hiding? Are they silencing their citizens to ensure justice is served, like they claim on their Facebook page? Or are they trying to protect the tourism industry for the island? These are questions that should be asked. The fact that they aren't briefing the citizens with any updated information is so interesting to me. It's alarming. It seems to me that authorities want things to die down, quiet down, so that the case is forgotten and their bottom line isn't affected. Governments should protect their citizens. I'm sure there are countries where citizens are protected. And I know that a situation like this would not go down in places like the Dominican Republic and places like Jamaica. Hapgood better be happy that happened in Anguilla and not on another island because... People take the law into their own hands and will handle business in other ways. So, you know, the fact that this happened in Anguilla and he got away with it and was able to get bail, able to stay on luxury, luxury properties, even after committing a crime, able to leave on a private jet. To me, it says a lot about Anguilla. He got a slap on the wrist for murdering a local. Hapgood got a slap on the wrist. And the Anguilla government and authorities have blood on their hands. They're just as guilty. They're just as wrong. You don't want to have people coming into your country thinking that they could get away with crimes. You don't want to have people entering your country thinking they can commit acts of violence and pay their way out of jail. You guys possibly just opened up Pandora's box. Because I saw Kenny's funeral online and you can see in his Face, the trauma that he endured. When you see Kenny's face in that coffin, Hapgood had the upper hand based on witness statements. Because even though they keep changing it up, we're getting Hapgood's side now and people are believing it. But you also have to take into account the people who actually work for the hotel. There were witnesses that walked into the room at some point and saw that Hapgood had the upper hand. Another thing is, I mean, there's so many rumors swirling. You don't even know what to believe. Between Hapgood's story changing and people's speculation being presented as facts, I don't even know what to believe. The only thing we know is that a young man was murdered and no one truly knows why. We're only getting one side of the story and we've accepted Scott Hapgood's side. We believe that... Kenny actually went to his room to rob him in front of his children, but the story has changed. We're only getting one side of the story. Anguilla Police has not confirmed that Hapgood's story is a fact. There's been a lot of things that's like a lot of stones left unturned, and we're not getting answers. So I just want you guys to keep that in, to keep that in mind, that we could be possibly vilifying someone who's innocent. We don't know what happened in that room. Scott Hapgood could be telling the truth. He could also be lying. So before we criminalize someone, let's really try to wait and find out what the facts are. But from what I'm feeling and seeing, I don't think we'll ever know. And that's alarming. And I want to go back to Hapgood's online supporters. His online supporters were smearing Kenny's name. So you mean to tell me, have good violently murders this man, and to add insult to injury, Hapgood's online supporters began spreading rumors of Kenny having a criminal record. Show me the receipts. Where is this record? Show us the record. I mean, isn't it bad enough that a man is dead? He's also someone's father. He's someone's husband. He's also someone's son. But it seems like people don't have empathy. He is a criminal in people's eyes. People believe what Hapgood said. And as we all know, we only know Hapgood's side of the story. That's not fair. The last thing that I want to talk about is a statement was made by a witness to a New York news publication. And they said that Hapgood's wife allegedly walked into the room after the altercation and she said, if the police do not get here, this will be all over U.S. news. 
You claim that your husband was fighting for his life and trying to protect his children and your biggest concern in that moment is the news? That would be the last thing on my mind if I walked into a scenario where my husband is taking someone's life because he was allegedly being robbed by an employee of the hotel that I'm staying at. That would be the last thing on my mind. I want to know, is my husband okay? I want to know, are my children okay? I have to even wonder if I'm okay. Because what the hell am I walking into right now? If that statement is true, that is so strange. And it just adds to all of the alarming things that I'm noticing about this story. This is a very tragic case and... It's just so strange because of the fact that so little information is being released on it. I hope that everyone receives justice in this case. If Kenny committed the crime, um, I hope that Hapgood and his family can walk away in peace and clear their name. And if Hapgood wrongfully used excessive force... I hope justice is served, and I hope when he goes back, if he goes back to Anguilla, Anguilla in August, I definitely hope that he ends up having to pay for his crime. I hope that both sides receive whatever justice they deserve in this matter. And I wish everyone the best. Share your thoughts on this story in the comment section below. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and follow me on Instagram. Safe travel. Now that your vacation is booked, go over to shopmissmj.com where you'll find everything from beach towels and sunglasses to plus size swimwear. Perfect for your next island getaway. That's shopmissmj.com. If you are in the New York City area, definitely check out Island Soul and Sweets BX. There are so many amazing seafood dishes, including snow crab legs and lobster tail. You'll also find great soul food dishes and delicious sweets. That's Island Soul and Sweets BX. Bring the passion back into your bedroom by visiting RoxyAfterDark.com.